Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion presented by Herd at Sports. I'm your host, Josh Mahler. We've got a lot to get to because we're going to go through all of the, the teams, all 32 teams in the NFL, and grade their entire draft. There was a lot of really good picks. There was a lot of really questionable picks. Um, overall, I felt like this was a really good draft. And so just looking at it overall, I, I think this was a lot of fun to be able to see where certain players went, uh, to see which uh, which teams were able to get on board and, and which teams got a good player and which teams didn't. Uh, so there's a lot to get to there. Uh, it looks like Jeremy just dropped out on me, but I'll bring him in once he can, joins back in. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got that and then a lot more to get to as well, because we're also going to talk about uh, some other news. So uh, we're going to get to all of that. But before we do, first, got to mention an amazing sponsor of ours, one that we have been partners with for quite some time now, and one that we love to to use as a sponsor, uh, and that is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an amazing service, amazing platform, amazing sponsor. Uh, it's the best way to get any kind of tickets if you are a fan of live events, whether it be sports or music or comedy shows, whatever the case may be, you know that SeatGeek is the way to go. SeatGeek is so amazing. Uh, I use it all the time whenever I'm getting tickets for any kind of sporting events or live events, whatever the case may be, because SeatGeek is the best. Um, if you're looking for specific seats, you can zoom in and see exactly where you're going to sit, uh, and you can pick it exactly where, where you like in the stadium. Uh, you can even find where there's some aisle seats. Everything about SeatGeek is absolutely amazing, so you should check them out just for that, that simple fact alone. But on top of that, they also make it very easy for you to find a great deal with their color coding system, with green being the best deal, yellow being not such a great deal. Red means keep on searching for a better deal. They make it very easy to find the best deals in the entire stadium, wherever it is that you're, you're, you're getting a, a ticket for. So go check out SeatGeek by going to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app today. And you can use that code R2TO and get yourself $20 off your next purchase. It's an amazing deal on an amazing platform. Uh, I promise you will not be disappointed with SeatGeek. Go check them out, SeatGeek.com, or download the SeatGeek app. And again, use that code R2TO to let them know that we sent you, and they'll give you $20 off your next purchase. SeatGeek Life is an event, and we have your tickets. Let's go ahead and get into it. And it does look like Jeremy was able to rejoin. Uh, Jeremy, how are we doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Then. Um... <clears throat> Had a little bit of technical difficulties, but um, you got to do what you got to do. But I'm doing pretty good. Then it was, I do agree. I think this was definitely a really good NFL draft. Obviously, I know there were some picks that we mentioned in the last episode. I think who's going to for sure go to a couple specific teams that we talked about. But um, outside of that, we're bringing back my favorite topic, the two minute drill. Then we're going to be kicking off with that. But I'm not going to get into full details. So you guys got to stick around. So, Josh, I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, no Father Blake uh, tonight. He's got daddy daddy duties, uh, so n I'm not gonna throw shade at the dude for having to do that. We're not we're not a full time podcast yet, right? So I can't I can't really hold yeah. anybody that accountable. So um, maybe you guys can help out um, by going over and you know hit first hit that subscribe button, hit that like button over on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on an Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, hit that five star review and help us out over there. You can also subscribe on those platforms too. Apparently that helps us out quite a bit um, but go follow us on social media you can find us on x formerly known as twitter instagram facebook all of that fun stuff keep on showing that love and that support we've got some big things in the works big news coming a lot of big things so maybe you can make this a full-time podcast if you want to see blake more often if you don't want to see blake more often throw that in the comments and maybe we'll just kick him out who knows um no i'm just kidding we, we love blake too much he's say, wow. he's he's <laughs> he's a team member for life no we oh, uh sure. Let's let's go ahead and get into this uh, this NFL draft. Kind of go through, break down each team. Want to start off by going through each team individually, and we'll kind of give an overall grade of how we feel that team did. We're going to go in alphabetical order because I think that's just the easiest way for me to sort through this. Uh, we're going to start off with the Arizona Cardinals. Um, we had the Cardinals going uh, first. They had their the first uh, the, in the first round. They had the fourth pick and the twenty seventh pick. I think that first round was a really good one. Uh, I would probably put it at like an maybe a B plus in just the first round, just because I think Darian, Darius Robinson wasn't the best edge at that that position, but uh, still really really solid. Maybe an A minus just because I think Marvin Harrison Jr. was an A plus pickup. Jeremy, I really I know how much you love Mar Marvin Harrison Jr., but. Um, overall, on their entirety, looking through everyone that they've got on their draft list. I feel like they 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 filled 
three out of the top five, uh, and then maybe five out of the top seven uh, of, of their highest needs. Uh, and, and I felt like overall they got a really good variety of different players in, whether it be talent level uh, or, you know, just overall of, of the position and, and what they play. And so overall, I'm, I'm liking this. Uh, I think for the Arizona Cardinals, overall, I'm not super impressed with anything. I'm going to give them a B, not a B plus, not a B minus, just a solid B. Um, even though, like I said, I do love their first pick and then and the number four spot, which I'm sure you do, too. Yeah, absolutely. That was the one that I was obviously locked in on. I mean, talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously what he's done throughout his entire college career at the Ohio State University. I mean, that one was obviously a no-brainer just because you got to think about this, Josh. I know what's left for um, Larry Fitzgerald, obviously, for the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, this definitely does give the opportunity for the Arizona Cardinals to look at somebody else outside of Mr. Fitzgerald. But I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I give them a B. I want to go B plus B minus along those lines. I mean, it, it is definitely one of those situations to where they just didn't pick like, for example, like the Bengals, like I was expecting them to pick just a lot of linemen. I mean, obviously we get some special specialty players on the defensive side or whatever the situation is. But I mean, you look throughout their entire, um, draft picks and the one that kind of stuck out to me was Isaiah Adams from Illinois then he's a he was a good offensive tackle obviously then even um uh Xavier Thomas being off the edge coming from Clemson I know that was to, that was to me that was another solid pick obviously having another good edge rusher off the edge but I mean Arizona they definitely did throw around the ball for getting a lot of different um uh, different positions for their draft picks so i'm giving them a lot of credit just because i think in those type of moments and situations it it definitely does help to where you can you can find out who's the key key person in this situation in draft and you're going to find out who's definitely going to need some more work coming from that college rank to the nfl rank now because obviously it's definitely going to be a big jump for these guys yeah there's there's just a lot of guys on their draft list overall that i'm looking at and i just don't think they, they strike me as that NFL ready. They're going to jump in their rookie year and make a big difference. Although I will say, uh, you know, looking at that third round pick, picking up Trey Benson from Florida State, running back from Florida State, that could be a sneaky good one to pick up because I do I do like Trey Benson quite a bit. I talked about him quite a bit last year at Florida State. Um, yeah. But I like that. What, what was your overall grade for them? I give them a B as well. B. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that as a solid B. That's not a bad grade to have in, in, in a draft. And yeah. drafting is really difficult. If you guys have ever done a fantasy draft, that's hard. But this is, this is, I mean, this is bigger than just even a, fa- a franchise fantasy draft. So, you know, looking at what you've got at, in the front office and what you've got to put together, it's difficult. Um, but moving on to the Atlanta Falcons, this is one that I, it's, it's going to be really hard for me to express how I feel. Uh, anyone who has watched the show for quite some time, especially if you can remember back mid 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 college football season last year, and then towards the end for the Heisman race, Michael Penix is one of, if not my favorite quarterback in this entire draft. I think the most NFL ready quarterback in this entire draft was Michael Penix Jr. I really do believe that. Uh, I, I I think Caleb Williams was the the best quarterback, the one that you've got to pick for number one. You know, when we talked about the Bears, that's what I mentioned. That's that doesn't change. Personally, I like Michael Penix Jr. a lot better. I think he could step in year one and learn to be an NFL quarterback. He's had a lot of time. He's had a lot of. Uh, he's he's got an incredible football IQ. He plays an NFL style too, uh, and so I I really like him a lot. Um, and so. Atlanta Falcons picking him at number eight. That was crazy. Okay. That was a very stupid pick of the Falcons. Now, if they didn't just now sign Kirk Cousins to what was it, a hundred and eighty million dollar deal or something? Hundred and sixty, hundred and eighty million. It was it was a crazy, crazy contract. If they didn't just sign him to a super high contract, let's say they got Kirk Cousins for a cheap two year deal. Uh, or you know maybe they got you know some other cheap quarterback to come in as a bridge quarterback. Maybe the way that the Patriots did with Kobe uh, Jacoby Brissett. If that was the case, this is an amazing pick. Good job, uh, Falcons, by surprising everybody and getting a great quarterback, a quarterback that I am extremely excited for in his NFL career. Now, their thought process is that 
we don't have to play Michael Penix for four years because we've got Kirk Cousins. But after that four years, Kirk Cousins is ready to move on, and we've got an, our next quarterback up. One, you're still going to have to pick up that fifth-year deal for a guy who never really played a snap uh, is the line of thinking there. I, just I, that the entirety of this pick, the pick itself was terrible. The player is amazing. I, okay, so I think a lot of people are misunderstanding that notion. Uh, the player is amazing. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. will be a game-changer in the NFL if he gets put in the right right situation. And I think Atlanta could be the right situation, but not with Kirk Cousins as, and, and as much as you're paying him too. So that was terrible. Um, but overall, you look down through the rest of what they've got. Uh, I do really, really like their third, third round pick in Braylon Trice, the edge from Washington. That was an amazing pickup. Uh, and then also Jace McClellan, getting him in the sixth round, that is a steal. You got him very low at a very good price. So Jace McClellan, a running back from Alabama, I really like that pickup too. So uh, looking at it overall, I really like outside of that uh, because one thing that was shocking is that you would think that Atlanta would have gone to defensive players, uh, which the fact that they didn't really help the Colts um, in that first round. Um, but then you see in that second, uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth round, they got some pretty good defensive players to step in they've got a, a couple of defensive tackles and a defensive uh, a defensive end and a pretty good linebacker from Notre Dame uh, JD uh, JD Bertland so I mean just looking at uh, sorry Bertrand um, but looking looking at their draft overall as stupid as their first pick was and again not because of the player I love Michael Penix Jr. I love the fact that he gets a chance at the NFL possibly I just think it was really dumb for the Falcons to have picked him um, but as, as dumb of a first round pick as that was, which I would probably give that first round a D minus, I might be giving them an A minus overall, uh, just because like looking everywhere else, they attacked everything else that they need for the most part, other than maybe an offensive line. Um, maybe I'll bump that down and I'll say a B plus, just because I think that's more of a fair grade. That's what I was sincerely going to give them was a B plus. But I mean, I do a hundred percent agree. For the first round pick, I would almost give them a like I wouldn't be that bad and give them an f but i mean it's it's probably it's probably more deserving of an f just because you think about the fact that they didn't they didn't need to go make that pick that was the wrong no. pick no. so you know maybe it deserves an f but i think they did get a good player and that's why i would give it a d minus but the here's the thing that i see like like you obviously just brought up you just signed Kirk cousins with you for the atlanta falcons then you you compare both of these quarterbacks. I understand Michael Panix Jr. is fresh out of college. He's got a lot of learning to do. But here's the situation here. If I'm the Atlanta Falcons, no disrespect to Kirk Cousins here, but you look at what Kirk Cousins has done. I understand the, the Minneapolis miracle for coming back by 33 or whatever it was. I understand that, but... Michael Penix is one of those quarterbacks where you said the best. You get him rolling into game time situations, he's gonna make um, he's gonna make a standpoint and say, I don't care if I'm a rookie, you're gonna you're gonna understand why that why that that got me here for this particular reason. But like outside of that, I'm in the same boat for looking at the rest of their draft class. The one that kind of stuck out to me was the JD Bertrand, the linebacker from Notre Dame. He yeah. is a I mean you look at the Notre Dame defense in general for what they were obviously like. And JD Bertrand was a really good middle linebacker for Notre Dame. And then even like you said, Jace McClellan Chase McKillen for Alabama for a running back. It it just seems like anybody out of Alabama obviously gets their momentum going. And if they get on the right foot here, they're just gonna be into a good grade of success here. But outside of the first the first selection, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, right when they got to this moment between the Arizona Cardinals and oh not the Cardinals, excuse me, for the Atlanta Falcons. It was between the Atlanta Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings were right behind them, correct? And they were talking about potentially who's gonna be that next person in the draft they were talking about obviously between michael Penix and i believe it was jj mccarthy but i mean in this type of a situation it just still kind of baffles me that you go ahead and pick michael Penix. i mean props to you for getting michael Penix for a quarterback but 
the thing is, if you're going to have a quarterback like that, you got to get him going a lot sooner than what you're ex- anticipating for. I mean, well, Kirk let's let's not person. forget. Let's not forget uh, with I think five or six years in college, if I remember correctly, I, I think five years. Uh, he Michael Penix isn't necessarily a young guy anymore. He's no, not your tip. He's not your typical senior or a junior coming out. Uh, so that's that's another thing, you know, where you look over at like a J.J. McCarthy and how young he is, uh, or even, uh, uh, you know, uh, Caleb Williams and how young he is. There's a few other guys that were kind of in that class that they're not they're not as as old. And so, you know, with that that couple of years does make a difference when it comes down to it. But yeah, overall, I think the Falcons redeemed themselves in the next few rounds uh, and then ended up filling in their slots. Um, going on to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I felt like the Baltimore Ravens were, man, I, I didn't see a whole lot coming from them. It, it wasn't impressive. Uh, you know, they didn't really make a lot of big picks that I think are going to make a big difference. One that I do like a lot uh, is when you look into that fourth round pick, uh, Devon Tez Walker. I think Tez Walker is an amazing wide receiver. That was one that I think they got him at a very good price there in the fourth round. Uh, the fact that he fell that low and you were able to get him that low, I like that a lot. Um, you know, there's some other names on that list that they picked up that just don't really strike me as game changers. Their first round pick that Nate Wiggins from uh, Clemson, he's a small guy, but he's got length. So we'll see what he's able to do. But overall, I I don't know. I wasn't incredibly impressed with the Ravens, but I don't think they did a bad job at their draft. I'm going to give him a C plus. That's what I was thinking. I was about C plus, maybe right at a C. I mean, Obviously, for their first pick, having Nate Wiggins from Clemson, I understand that for what Nick Clemens was able to do throughout the entire year. But, I mean, the thing is you can only do so much, obviously, for what you can shoot for. But just looking at throughout the rest of their draft selection, they had a decent decent pick for, um, for a variety going into the situation here. But – you just think about this for Baltimore. It was just definitely to me. It just kind of seemed like one of those, eh, we'll just pick them up here. Kind of situational drafts. It wasn't anything off the rails, but I mean the big one, obviously, like I agree was the Tez Walker from North Carolina. That was a steal. Um, or even, um, I don't know why I'm drawing, uh, Adiza Isaac from Penn state. Um, yeah. he's, he's another good linebacker for Penn state. Then, um, but I really can't talk a whole bunch about this this draft for the for just for the Baltimore Ravens sake. Like, to me, like I said, it was just kind of like a eh. We'll pick this individual player based off of what. Yeah, the and Ravens it it didn't really feel like they attacked their most um, their most important needs either. It just kind of felt like they were taking best player on the board. Gosh. But even at that, I didn't feel like it was the best player on the board. Um, I, I I would have thought Cooper DeGene would have gone uh, in, instead of Nate Wiggins. You know, something like that. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just not not impressive. That's why I'm going to stick with that C plus grade. But going over to Buffalo, Buffalo might be the winners of the draft. Uh, we'll go through the rest of these and kind of refresh my memory. But if I remember correctly, by looking through the draft, I feel like Buffalo did the best job of finding what they need and going with let's get not just the best on board based on you know the the experts or whatever. Let's go best on the board that fits our needs and best on our board Uh, and that's the way that this felt uh you know in the the second round they didn't have a first round pick second round they pick up keon coleman wide receiver from florida state that's a great pickup or replacing stefan diggs that's something they really needed i I like that a a lot and i think that's a a wide receiver that could have gone even higher um and then you go on to their other second round pick cole bishop safety from utah another really good pick that really fits in a, a, a need that they need very badly right now uh, and, and so you know the fact that they get a good good player and a good young player and then they also got themselves uh you know and a, a, a safety they got a cornerback they got an edge they got a center they filled in everything that they really needed and tried to attack the best on their board not listening to outside noise and so uh, overall i mean looking at, at everything they got I, i'm gonna i'm gonna be really really nice to them and game, bump them up i think they got an a for overall draft i'm not gonna give them an a plus i don't know if it was quite deserving of that, um, but based on everybody else, I feel like they, they might be the winners of the draft. Without a doubt. I mean, I was going to give them an A regardless for their selections. I mean, it was definitely a big thing to pick up um, who they did, and obviously their first-round pick, that was definitely huge from 
from what you obviously saw him do at Florida State, I mean, it was definitely a situation for Keon Coleman to – He to me, he just seems like he fits – he would be able to fit the best for the Buffalo Bills, especially like you mentioned, not – with the Buffalo Bills releasing Stephon Diggs, they need another key wide receiver to shoot to sling the rock to. But why I mean, do I feel like Gabe Davis went somewhere else too? Did did Gabe Davis go down to Jacksonville? I don't know why I'm, I'm I might be thinking totally incorrect there, but for some reason I feel like Gabe Davis went somewhere. But yeah, I mean it it, it does it it feels like they they filled in needs uh, and and Keon Coleman great great pickup too, and that's uh, maybe an underrated wide receiver in this class. Yeah, without a doubt, he's he does he's definitely one of those sneaky underrated wide receivers that can come out of nowhere and just in the flip of a switch and just make you seem silly. But even outside of that, obviously, um, Tylen Grable from UCF. We we watched UCF play against Oklahoma and we got to see him play. And he was a really he was a good stud lineman. He was definitely holding his own. Obviously, and even um, Daquan Hardy from Penn State for being a CB. I mean. He's also another good one. It, it just seemed like this year for Penn State, they they just didn't seem like they had any major weak points. But, like, obviously I know the, the record says different, but it just seems like they, they didn't have a whole bunch of weak points. But I would definitely give the Buffalo Bills the A, if not the A-plus for this, this draft selection. They definitely get the top dollar. Yeah, it feels like they attacked what they needed to. Um, going on to the Carolina Panthers. This one I feel really split on on how I feel because I'm looking at what they picked up. Xavier Legit, uh, man, I, I'm not sure if I would have put him this high up in wide receivers. So for your first round pick, I, I wasn't very hot on that. But going down through the, the list of other guys that they picked up, uh, I'm just going to name off the two Texas guys. Jonathan Brooks, running back from Texas. Uh, and then they also pick up Jatavion Sanders, which Jatav- Jatavion Sanders down in the fourth round, that's a very good steal. I don't know how he was still on the board. I, I like him a lot. I think he's NFL ready. Uh, he's one of those guys that he, getting him in the fourth round is a steal just because I think he's going to contribute to the team right away. Uh, I, I Overall, I like this. I'm, I'm not extremely excited about everything they added. I still don't think they're going to be a great team, but I think they did some good things. I'm going to give him a B-. minus. I'm going to be completely honest with you. What? When you texted me saying, how is Jatavian Sanders not off the board yet? I was I was as shocked as you were. I was sincerely thinking that he was definitely going to be like a second, maybe a third round. I, I thought maybe around like ball. late second, early third, honestly. Exactly. Because if you look at the tight ends, I, I mean – there was there were certain position groups that were just stacked this year. I think linemen, uh, especially you know like the, the offensive linemen, you know, looking at the the offensive tackles, this was a very stacked year for them. Uh, so you know, and then of course you had a a lot of QBs that I think went under the radar too, and we'll probably talk about a few of them coming up. Yeah, we'll definitely get to talking about them. But I mean, even another another name to mention, obviously, is Michael Barrett, the linebacker from Michigan. I yeah. mean. He was definitely one of those later picks that I was still kind of a little bit surprised to see, just especially from what Michigan did this this last season. But, I mean, overall, to me, Xavier Legette, I understand he's a good wide receiver, but to me it just seemed like it wasn't a big monumental thing for for what he was able to do this year. And don't get me wrong, he put up great numbers, but to me – I. I didn't see it in Xavier Legit. I mean, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of people that say, how do you not see that? But, I mean, you only get so much college football, and how much do we really actually get to see for specific teams when we get to those moments to where we can watch each and every game night in and night out. But I'm in the same boat. I would you give them for a grade, a B? Uh, B minus. B minus. I was going to say, I give them a B, B minus in that general area. Yeah, and, and- – Oh, it was it was good, uh, and I think the talent they got was pretty good. It's just I'm not sure how much it's going to translate to this upcoming season. But going on to the Bears, uh, man, the Bears only had five picks. Uh, they had two in the first round, a third, fourth, and fifth. The only thing I didn't like was them taking a punter in the fourth round. That's that's yeah. the only thing. But did you see what punter it was? It was the punter that had the most experience, probably out of any punter ever in the history of football uh it was the iowa punter so yeah yeah tory taylor i mean so i don't know i'm just i'm just 
I'm not sure why you would draft a punter. I understand that the the logic of drafting a kicker, uh, you know, when you're when you're thinking of a field goal kicker, much like what the Bengals did. You pick up Evan McPherson, and all of a sudden you've got a dude that's just drilling him. So you can you can find some logic into that. Outside of that, really good with only five picks. You only didn't fill in one of your top five needs, but you still kind of pressed just about everywhere you really needed. Uh, I liked the first round a lot, Caleb Williams, and then give him an extra weapon. So, uh, you know, a lot of people were kind of upset with them not going after the offensive line a little more. Um, and the kid that they picked up from Yale, I have no no idea who he is, what, uh, what he's going to be able to do. But overall, uh, really good draft. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give him an A minus just because I don't think that it was bad enough to give him a B, a B plus or anything. Uh, I also don't know if I can bump him up any higher. So I feel like an A minus is a sweet spot there. Yeah, an A minus definitely says, well, obviously we – we didn't expect anything less than Caleb Williams go first off the board. That was, let's just get that out there. That was an obvious no-brainer. But, I mean, the one that obviously sticks out to me is Roma Dunze from Washington, of course. Obviously, we were able to see, not in person, but just obviously from when we've watched games from Washington, we were able to see what Odunze has done throughout this entire year, and he was a big he was one of the big key successes for why Michael Penix Jr. was so good for the long ball. I mean, Odunze was definitely one of those guys to where if you if you get caught flat footed, see you later in those situations. But well, and now so, you've got Roma Dunze who can blow the top off the defense. Then you've got Keenan Allen who's really good at crum- a guy coming across in the middle. Uh, and then you've mm-hmm. also got DJ Moore. So you, you've got three really good receivers there. Who knows yeah. whatever whatever else they're able to pick up. And I haven't really looked a whole lot in the free agent sign free agency signings uh, afterwards too. Uh, I, I did see Drake Stoops went over to the Chargers uh, or no to the Rams. I'll have to look at that. Pretty sure it was the Rams, yeah, but the Rams. Uh, yeah. So I mean, just looking looking around and, and, and seeing some of them, I saw some Oklahoma players. But who knows what else uh, what else they add? I, I I like what the what the Bears did though overall with five picks. I think you came out out of this pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, four out of the five picks were really good picks. The I'm not nothing disrespectful for Tory Taylor. That's, I'm in the same boat. That one kind of surprised me. We're used to seeing kickers going, not punters going, but nothing against him. I mean, hey, he was a heck of a punter at Iowa and. I sincerely think, Josh, if the if the Chicago Bears get all gears rolling right away this season and everything's clicking, they're going to be one of those teams where this isn't the same Chicago Bears that we're used to seeing where it's it's going to be a rough and tumbly year. This is definitely going to be a four-quarter team to where they are either A, going to piss pound the crap out of you, or B, it's going to be close and it's going to be down to the wire, I think. Yeah, I think they're going to get into that situation. I think they're going to look a lot like how Nebraska is. They're going to be really close in just about every game, but just can't finish it off. I still think they might be able to squeeze out like seven wins this year, though. I'll have to look at their schedule. Maybe we'll do that later on and kind of take a look and and dive through before the NFL season starts. But let's go ahead and move on to your Bengals. I think they had a pretty good draft overall. The only thing that they didn't get that I was really expecting them to try to attack was a running back. But when you look at this running back class, there wasn't a ton of great options. So I can understand not going there. Uh, you know, going to the draft for this, Um, you know, so one thing that another thing that I I think that they wanted to try to add was first, you need an edge player uh, on defense. Now that you're possibly losing Hender, uh, is it Henderson, Trey Uh, Henderson. Henderson. Uh, And then, and then you've also got uh, T Higgins now wanting a trade again. So I I don't know. I mean, I, I think those were two positions that I would have liked to see them go a little stronger. They did get Jermaine Burton from Alabama as wide receiver to try to kind of play into that role for possibly losing T Higgins. That's not a done deal yet. Uh, neither is, is losing Henderson either. So uh, overall, like I said, running back was the only thing that they didn't pick up. Uh, and, and looking at, at their list overall, I, I think they did a pretty good job. I'm going to give them a B plus just because I don't think they made any like, Oh my gosh, you got this player, but they also didn't blow the bag on anything either. So, you know, I, th- I think they did a pretty good, pretty good job overall. Yeah. I was, I was excited to see, or our overall draft pick. I, I'm in the same boat. I really wish we could have attacked the running back position, but it is what it is, and we can just only hope for the best for, for what we have. But picking up an offensive tackle like Amarius Mims from Georgia, that one I was I was a little excited to see just because, like anybody that knows this is Nia Bengals, we may have a good quarterback, but we got to do whatever, whatever we can to keep that man playing this entire season healthy. I mean – Marius Mims, he's definitely a good 
obviously asset for our offensive line. And like you look throughout the entire rest of our pick selections, of course, um, Eric all from Iowa, Tanner McCaughlin from Arizona, um, Sutter Johnson, um, even going back to the safety position for, um, for, uh, Deshaun Anthony at Ole Miss. I mean, that that's definitely a position for um, for Cincinnati's defense. That's a position that has been our our big struggle here. And nothing against because obviously on the front side you obviously have Hubbard, Hendrickson, and along those lines. But I mean, once you get back in the secondary position, back in that safety spot, it's definitely a hard thing. And obviously, safety is is already a hard position to to play in general. But I mean, once you get if you have a good safety, then you can you can breathe a little bit easier on the defensive side, especially if they get into that into those deep cover four situations, Josh. But I'll give them a B plus just because I'm happy. But there was definitely some room for improvement, obviously, especially for the running game, like we've mentioned. But we can only see what this season brings, so we just got to wait. Yeah. Um, moving on, we'll kind of go a little quick here through a few teams. Uh, Cleveland, I think they did a pretty bad job overall looking at the players they drafted, uh, I'm not really seeing, you know, a whole lot there. Uh, I don't think they're going to add to it. The best player that they drafted was in the second round, Michael uh, Hall Michael. Jr. from Ohio State. Really good defensive tackle. That was one of their needs. But outside of that, I don't think they filled really any of their other needs. Uh, and, and they did pick up a linebacker from Mississippi State, Nathaniel Watson. I don't know too much about him. He doesn't really strike me as a NFL-ready player. So I don't feel like they really added to their needs too much uh, outside of that defensive tackle and, and Michael Hall Jr. So I, I'm going to give them like a D plus. I, I'm, I'm not impressed with the Browns at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going to be realistic. Realistic. I mean, Cincinnati is the better Ohio team. No, no, no disrespect. But I mean, I I give them a C minus. I mean, it was nothing out of the or like nothing extraordinary. I should say. I mean, the only one that that was kind of cool a little bit for their draft selections was seeing um, Miles Harden coming from South Dakota. But I mean, that was just because obviously being close to us a little bit, that was just kind of like a, at least for me, just to see somebody close in our regional area in the Midwest to go out to um, go out to the Cleveland Browns and, and play in the NFL. So hats off to him. But I mean, there wasn't anything that really mesmerized me about the Cleveland Browns picks. Yeah. What, what was your grade for them? I give him a C minus. C minus. Okay, a little better than me. I I just I wanted to give him like a D minus. Um, but I just I hated it. But uh, moving on to the Cowboys, this is one I'm scratching my head because I see a lot of critics saying that this was a really good draft. I've seen critics, uh, you know, like these quote unquote experts give the Cowboys an A minus. Uh, I'm not what? impressed. I'm not impressed at all. I do think there's probably more talent than I'm willing to give them. Uh, obviously, first round getting my my guy Tyler Guyton. Congratulations, big guy, going on to the offensive uh, offensive line, adding to it down there. I think he will be one of those guys. If you're looking for an offensive line, obviously, I think Oklahoma is one of the best places to go, and that's not just bias talking. Uh, that's just that's facts. And so, right. yeah. So I, I, that was the only really good one. I'm looking through and trying to really pull something in. I don't see any other name that stands out. That hey, you got a good one here. Uh, and so, man, I'm. I'm gonna be nice and give him a C, but I I'm I'm not impressed. I want to give him a C minus, but I'm gonna bump him up to a C just to be nice. If you won't give him a C minus, I'll give him a C minus. So I'll give them a C minus here. I mean, obviously in the same situation, Tyler Guyton, congratulations from Boomer Sooner Country. Um, it was definitely cool to see a great offensive tackle like him go to a team that's definitely in need of um, some offensive help a little bit. But I mean, looking at the rest of their draft picks realistically i mean outside of that the only one that kind of somewhat stuck out to me was cooper bb from kansas state i mean he was just another one of those those offensive linemen for an offensive guard he he had a he had a decent year at kansas state but i mean otherwise nothing really stuck out to me i, I mean i guess i could i guess i can give blake a little bit of a shout out for down in auburn i mean having justin rogers going to their defensive side obviously but i mean outside of that i mean it wasn't anything special or yeah big yeah uh not not great uh you said you're giving them a c minus right yeah i give them a c yeah. minus and um moving on to denver looking at denver I, I really liked the first first pick i feel like denver denver or minnesota would have liked to capitalize on Penix. Minnesota seems like they were set on JJ for some reason 
give it to him. Um, but Bo Nix going to the Broncos, I like this fit. Uh, I think he is an NFL-ready quarterback right now. He's improved so much over the last few years. Outside of that, I'm, I'm not seeing a, a ton of like really great ones. Uh, he does does have his buddy Troy Franklin come over with him from Oregon, wide receiver. Uh, so that's one thing to add to it. Uh, but the biggest one that I, I see from them for a steal, Audrey Estime uh, from Notre Dame, running back from Notre Dame. I, I like that a lot, and they got him in the fifth round. Um, so that's a, that's a running back that would have been on the board for the Bengals to pick up, honestly. And, and now the Broncos take him in. Uh, I like that, but I'm, not, I'm just not sure if they needed that running back pick. Outside of that, uh, I like what the Broncos did. I'm, I'm going to give them a, maybe a B-. minus. Uh, I, th- I think they had a pretty solid draft. Yeah, they had a solid draft, I would definitely say. To me, it definitely gives one of those those big breath relievers, especially for Bo Nix, having Tyler, having Troy Franklin coming over with him as well. It was to me that kind of seemed like another representation, like what it was for Cincinnati with, but Joe Burrow and having Jamar Chase and having that that great chemistry and connection. To me, I'm gonna kind of see a little bit, at least how that's how I feel that you're gonna get that kind of connection, like what it was for us in Cincinnati. But I mean, outside of that, like. Um, Audric Estheim from from Notre Dame, I believe you mentioned him, Josh. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it it was definitely a, a it was definitely a good pick for for the uh, for the Denver Broncos. And I mean, I know my buddy Carson here. He was at the at the beginning of last season. He was so hyped for Russell Wilson, and obviously the let's ride. But I mean, um, the only thing that Russell Wilson was riding was a one way ticket out of Denver. Um, I mean. This is definitely going to be a new situation to where I think we can see a lot of talent coming from the Denver Broncos now. But, I mean, obviously, only only words can do so much, so we just got to wait for this upcoming season to see what it's going to bring. All right. Uh, let's go speed rounds to try to get through these because they're, they're taking a little longer than I expected. Uh, I just – there's so many players. Uh, we're really? big, I'm, a, I'm a huge college football fan, so seeing a lot of these names, i got plenty to talk about. We'll, we'll speed through, though. You're into college football a little bit more, starting, so. starting with Detroit, um, speeding through them. Not in, not incredibly impressed. Uh, I do like the Terry on Arnold in the first round, cornerback from Alabama. Alabama. So uh, that was a really good one outside of that. I'm going to give them – Probably a C minus. I don't think they did a bad. I don't think they had a bad draft. Just not a great one. Yeah, they were they were an okay average draft. I mean, outside of their beginning pick, the next one that kind of stuck out to me, which he was a little bit later in into the pick, was McKee Wingo from LSU for the D tackles position. But I mean, overall, outside of that, it was just nothing, nothing extraordinary, nothing mediocre. So I give him a C, B minus yeah. C. Yeah, I like that. Um, moving on to the Packers. Man, I, I really like what the Packers did overall. I was kind of surprised that they didn't go with like a Cooper DeGene that felt like the right fit for him. Um, but they they went through. They, I think they did a pretty solid job. Uh, one that I think is awesome is Kalen King all the way in the seventh round. Also picking up uh, Michael Pratt from Tulane. That is one tough dude. So adding yeah. him to the, the quarterback room, I think that helps. Uh, I'm going to give them B-. minus. Pretty solid draft. Yeah, the same thing. I, I give him a B minus, right around a B. Solid draft. Then obviously their first pick, Jordan Morgan, the big offensive tackle from from Arizona, being six five, three hundred and eleven pounds. I mean, he's definitely going to be a good representation for the Green Bay Packers, and he's definitely going to be a good shining star for what the Green Bay what Green Bay has, and we can see what they can bring for the rest of the year. Yeah, um, Houston. Looking through Houston, actually, I don't even think I actually looked through Houston. Now that I'm looking at this, uh, Kate Stover, Kate Stover from Ohio State. That's a really good one from in the fourth round. Yeah. Another tight end, kind of going later. Um, but man, looking through these names, I like it. Uh, I'm going to give them a B minus. Solid, solid draft. Yeah, so, same thing. Solid draft. They got some really good names. Obviously, adding like Kate Stover over, to the Texans too. Weird. I just pieced that together. Yeah, p- p- putting him back on the same team as C.J. Stroud. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's huge. That's why I was really excited to see that. And Jamal Hill from Oregon too. So yeah, the, yeah. I, I don't think I. I think I must have skipped over the Houston's when I was prepping. Even Blake Fisher from Notre Dame, obviously. I'm, I'm gonna give him. That. I'm gonna give him a B plus actually, just because I really yeah. after after really diving into this B plus, I'm gonna bump that up yeah. two That's two. Fun. So what 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 did you have? I would give him a B plus honestly. I mean, they had they had some good selections. I mean, the majority yeah. of their needs got picked. The only thing they just didn't give us a the offensive guard, so gotta give him credit. 
Uh, moving on to the Colts. Uh, they probably could have used one of those tight ends going. Uh, they didn't get one, but they they filled up their roster pretty well, I think, with this. They had a really good draft getting Adonai Mitchell. Uh, that was really big. Wide, wide receiver from, from Texas. Uh, mm-hmm. their, their first their first round pick, that was one that I think the Falcons helped them on by not picking up that defensive edge. I, I think Latu would have gone to the Falcons. Uh, and then picking up Jalen Simpson, I'll shout him out, Auburn boy for – for Blake, uh, and then of course my Oklahoma guy Jonah Laulu. Laulu. Um, he he went in the seventh round. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Uh, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have seen him getting drafted at all. So uh, I, I like what the Colts did. I'm going to give them a B. Yeah, I I would do the same. I give them a B. I mean, another one that I I didn't hear maybe you mentioned, but maybe you did another one's Anthony Gould from Oregon State. I know he was definitely one of those kind of those sneaky wide receivers where he can come out of the woodwork and really surprise people. But outside of that, I mean, out of Mitchell, obviously from Texas, that was big, but it's definitely going to be, I think it'll be a solid year for, for the, uh, for the Indianapolis Colts. So I give them a B. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see what they put, put to use there. Um, going over to the Jacksonville Jaguars, picking up three LSU guys. Uh, I really like that. Brian Thomas jr. Kind of adding him to the, to the, uh, roster. I, Maybe not that high. I feel like you could have gotten him later on, maybe at that second round pick. But they did get Mason Smith, also from LSU, uh, and then they also picked up Jordan Jefferson, defensive tackle from LSU. Uh, overall, I mean, uh, I think Keelan Robinson, uh, running back from Texas, I think picking him up down in the fifth round was a good pickup as well. Nice little steal there. Uh, pretty solid draft. Another one where they filled up the needs that they needed and found guys that they felt like fit their system. So I'm going to give them an A minus. Yeah. I would I would sincerely be on the same boat, either an A minus or right at a B plus. But I mean, it's definitely one of those situations to where you get a lot of a lot of teammates that are used to their chemistry. I mean, it doesn't matter obviously from the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball or a little bit of both. But it, having that many players from LSU obviously coming over, especially being on their defensive side for what the Jacksonville Jaguars are signifying that they need to work on their defensive front. But it's definitely going to be a fun year, so I give I give them an A minus for their for their selections yeah uh moving on to kansas city can't really argue with the masterminds over there uh you can look at the the guys that they picked up and question it like cj hansen from holy cross and think what are you thinking but they know what they're doing so uh, i think adding xavier worthy another blow it off the top kind of guy now they've got uh reishi rice hollywood brown and xavier worthy good luck trying to get behind all three of those guys so overall i'm gonna give them a b plus uh it's probably worthy of like a C plus, but I'm going to keep it at a B plus because it's the chiefs. Yeah. I, if I had, if I wasn't being me, I give them an F just cause it's the chiefs, but that's, that's besides the point, but no, I'd realistically give them a B B plus. I mean, another name that could be worth the mention was Jared Wiley from TCU for that tight end position. He's definitely another asset to where you just don't have to worry about, um, ninety uh, percent being just what Travis Kelsey is going to do, so it's definitely going to be an interesting time for what the Kansas City Chiefs can do and be able to incorporate him into the team. Yeah, uh, moving on to the Chargers, I really like what the Chargers did. I think this was a solid draft for them as well. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they they got guys that they needed. Uh, Joe Alt, that is an All Pro. That is a future Hall of Famer. The more I look awesome. at him. So, uh, man, I, I like him. Uh, Lad McConkey going in the, in the second round there. That was a great pickup. Um, you know, so you've got him. You've also got uh, Brendan, Ri- uh, Brendan Rice. Uh, uh, who, why am I? Uh, Jerry Rice's son. So from USC, wide receiver. They, they had a really solid draft. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. I, I was thinking about a B plus, but I'm going to give him an A-, A- on this draft. I mean, you can honestly go either way, A minus or B plus for this kind of for their selections. But the big one, obviously, that sticks out to me, of course, was Joe All from Notre Dame. I mean, you said the best. This guy, literally, de- he's definitely the biggest Hall of Famer that is that is gonna be in the Hall of Fame talk. I mean, you obviously saw what he was able to do with Notre Dame, and he was just nothing but an All Star for Notre Dame. I mean. How could you not he's, be? he's not necessarily the biggest in size, but he's just got such a great technique, yeah. and so I'm yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm really I'm really excited, and, and I think he's I think he's versatile too. I'm pretty sure he can line up inside or outside. Yeah, I was just say his mobility is incredible for his height. Um, I guess what, what were you going to give him for a grade? 
I'd give him I'd give him an A minus a B plus. I like it. Yeah, Chargers great draft. Uh, Rams another pretty good draft picking up Jared Verse. I like that uh, from Florida State. He's an edge player on defense. Braden Fisk. I think that was again another Florida State guy. I guess I didn't realize how many uh, how many double ups they got. But uh, a defensive tackle. So adding both of them on the defensive line. They also got Blake Corum. Uh, man, looking down through through what they've got, I, I really like that a lot. And then Jordan Jordan Whittingham, wide receiver from Texas, that's that's a surprising pickup that late in the sixth round. So uh, overall, I like what the Rams did. I'm gonna give them. Man, I don't want to keep on handing out A minuses, but I feel like that's worthy of an A minus. I mean, we're good teachers, Josh. So we gotta give we gotta give the where the credits do. So I'll be on the same, but I give him an A minus. I mean, the one that stuck out to me was the Blake Corum pick. I mean, we obviously saw what Blake Corum did in Michigan. He was unbelievable for what they were able to bring. I mean, breaking records and so on and so forth. But no, I would, I'm in the same, but I give him an A minus for what they were able to do. Yeah. Um, moving on to the Raiders. I am extremely disappointed in how the Raiders performed in this draft. Brock Bowers was an amazing pickup, and after that, I just didn't see anything. Uh, and I think Brock Bowers was, let's go get the best guy on the board because we couldn't get one of the top qu- quarterbacks. But I think there were some other quarterbacks that you could have got. Uh, you could have gotten Rattler in like the fifth or fourth or fifth round. Um, you know, there's other guys too that were out what? there. So uh, I, I'm surprised Sam Hartman dropped so low. I don't even remember if he got drafted. Uh, I know he went to the Commanders uh, either as a free agent or something. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's – just a, a bunch that they went wrong on. So I'm going to give them like a D plus. Yeah. I mean, the only one that obviously stuck out was just Brock Bowers. And I mean, I wish he would have went to Cincinnati, but obviously we, like I knew those are, those dreams are only up in smoke. But I mean, outside of that, I, I give them a C minus D plus. And I'm feeling pretty generous. Um, going on to the dolphins. I like the chop Robinson pickup uh, outside of that. I'm just, I'm not seeing them fill their needs, uh, and so I'm, I'm not really happy with what they got either, but I feel like they did get some good guys in. So just because of that, I'm going to bump them up to a C-. minus. I think they did okay, but not great. Yeah, they did. To me, this is another average draft selection. I mean, nothing nothing extraordinary, nothing You passed, nothing horrible. You passed the test? Yeah, barely. I mean, you- you barely passed the test. I mean, there might have been some extra credit points, but, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, Jalen Wright from Tennessee, outside of that, Patrick Hall from Houston. But, I mean, for overall, it was just nothing out of the ordinary. So, like I said, C-, minus. give them a D plus if we really had to. Yeah, yeah, just not super impressive. Uh, another not very impressive one was Minnesota Vikings. Uh, obviously, again, Walter Rouse and another offensive tackle from Oklahoma. Uh, so I like that one. I, I guess Will Reichert as a as a yeah, you know I, I think that's a six round pick. I think that was pretty good. So uh, getting getting yourself a good kicker. Um, yeah. But man, I mean JJ McCarthy. I'm not I'm not huge on that. Dallas Turner was a good pickup too. So I guess I forgot they picked him up. I'm just now looking at that one. So. Man, and Kyrie J- J- Jackson. Okay, it's it's getting better down the list now that I'm now that I'm actually paying attention. This is another one I think I must have just skipped over in the prep. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe I'll bump them up. I I, I like this a little better now that I'm looking at. It. I'm gonna give him a B minus. I'm not big on JJ McCarthy. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving him a C plus just because. I mean, there's been so much talk about JJ McCarthy. I understand what he was able to do in Michigan here, but. I correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. I believe you, myself, and Blake all mentioned this to each other. He's just one of those quarterbacks where he just seems like he needs another year in college. I mean, because he was what? Was he a junior in college? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. And he just he just didn't really strike me as NFL ready, but he did impress me incredibly in in the playoffs against Alabama uh, and against Washington. Yeah, don't get me wrong. He knows when he knew when to shine in the moments, but I mean, to me, it, it was just definitely one of those moments where I wish he would have t- taken another year of college and just seen see how that went, and maybe he can get a bigger exposure than what he already did. So nothing, nothing great, nothing horrible. So I give him, I give him a, a C. Yeah, um, moving on to the Patriots, another really good draft overall when you look at what uh, what all they've got. Uh, I really like Jalen Polk, wide receiver from Washington. They had some dudes. Uh, there's another one that we're going to talk about here coming up, McMillan. Um, but, uh, you know, Drake May, that, I, I think that was the right pick for them. That just feels right. Uh, so I'm really glad they didn't go with the JJ route. Um, and then, you know, you also go down the list. Uh, 
Javon Baker from UCF. I think that was a really good wide receiver to pick up. Uh, and then also Joe Milton, QB from Tennessee. I kind of like this just because you get two young guys in there, see what you can do with them. And then Jaheim Bell in the seventh round, a tight end going that late. Uh, you know, and Jaheim Bell is a really good tight end. So I, I like theirs overall. Uh, I'm going to give him a B plus. I would, that was, I was thinking about that B plus B right around that area. But I mean, obviously for Javon Baker from UCUF for another wide receiver for what they need. I mean, you get into the situation, obviously for what the new England Patriots were. And obviously it was definitely, it was definitely in a moment where they needed to have a different quarterback other than, um, other than Jones. But I mean, Drake may, I think he'll, I think he'll sit well with the Patriots, but I mean, it was, I'd give it, I give it a B, B minus around that era. So nothing crazy, nothing, nothing horrible. Yeah. Um, going on to the Saints. Uh, I mean, overall, I like what the Saints did too. Uh, this is another team that I, I remember looking at them, but I don't remember it being this good of a draft. Uh, I want to give them a B minus. Uh, Spencer Rattler in the fifth round. I think that was a good pickup for a backup QB. Kind of give him some time to to work through some some things and and see how he how how he is. Um, and so I, I don't like the rumors that it's all because of the Netflix show. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. I, I haven't yeah. heard it directly from an NFL scout himself or an owner. So I, I, I'm not buying that. He, he's, he's, been, he's matured a lot, uh, and especially in his last two years there at South Carolina. Um, Kool-Aid McKinstry going to picking him up in the second round. And then, of course, Talese Fuaga. I, 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 like, I like what they had. So uh, what did I say? I think I'm going to give him a B- minus, right? Yeah, you give him a B minus, and I'm in the yeah. same, but I give him a B minus. I mean, the one that I'm the most excited for is obviously, um, uh, why wow, I just drove Kool Aid McKinstry from Alabama. Yeah. I mean, it, he's definitely a great CB from from Alabama. We were obviously able to see what he brought, and I mean, of course, Spencer Rowler going on talking a little bit about him. I mean, you 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 talked about this a while back. He is definitely matured. And I I believe I even we all probably did to be real. To be honest with mm-hmm. you, I mean, he's definitely one of those characters where I understand once you get into like TV and Netflix, there's a different, there's a sh- there's a star that shines a little bit on you. But I mean, you can definitely tell how mu- how mature he's gotten over the years, and that was definitely a big thing because obviously he was he was cutting it close to getting cut. And I mean, Spencer Aller, he's definitely he's definitely one of those players to where I'm thankful that he matured up and adulted to where he's able to still do what he loves. So nothing but respect for him. And I hope nothing but the best. Yeah. Um, going on to the New York giants. We're going to go a little bit quicker through the rest of these. And we're probably going to have to skip the two minute drill today. Cause yeah, man, say, 32 teams minutes. doesn't seem like that much until you're trying to talk about what they're doing. Um, yeah. Bleak neighbors in the first, that was questionable to me. Um, he doesn't have a quarterback to throw it to. So looking at everything they did, man, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give him a, I'm gonna give him a D plus. Yeah, I was I was gonna be generous, give him a C minus, D plus. But I mean, outside of that, you have no one to throw to. Theo Johnson from Penn State, another tight end for for the New York Giants. I mean, the New York Giants can really honestly take anything that they can at this point. So, Josh, I'm gonna give him a D minus, D plus. Yeah, uh, going on to the Jets, I like the fact that they pick up uh, Braylon Allen. There's a really good running back pickup in the fourth round. Jordan Travis in the fifth round, uh, good to sit back, sit back behind Aaron Rodgers. So I like this quite a bit. First round was solid too. Uh, I'm going to give them a B. I'm going to give them just a solid B. I think that was pretty solid. Uh, good, good draft. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was definitely a good draft. I mean, obviously from the get go, Olu Fashnal from Penn State. That was definitely a great pick for him. It's definitely another big thing that'll help Aaron Rodgers get more time in the pocket. Then I, I'm in the same boat. I give him a solid B. Yeah, um, going on to the Eagles, uh, another winner of this draft, really big yeah. time, especially early in the draft. What did you do bad last year? Secondary. What did you add to this year? Very well secondary you've got uh quinyon mitchell i know he's from toledo but you're gonna see why he's so special and why he went first round and then cooper dejean got those two guys back to back and then he just added to that defensive line i like this a lot i'm gonna give them an a minus yeah definitely i'm in the same boat i give him an a minus me cooper dejean obviously we saw what he was able to do with iowa then will will shipley for their running game at clemson so they definitely have some powerhouses that they're gonna be um, they're going to be bringing up, so I give them an A minus. Um, going on to Pittsburgh, uh, man, I, I think they did pretty solid overall. I feel like they filled their needs as much as they could. 
Um, they, they, they had some really good picks. One notable one to p- throw out there is Roman Wilson from Michigan. I think that could be, uh, give give him a little bit of time. And I think he, I think he could work his way on the scene, especially getting him there in the third round. So, uh, I feel like I got to give them a B minus. Uh, it was good, but not great. Yeah. Same thing. B minus good, but not great. But I mean, outside of, um, Roman Wilson, I mean, Peyton Wilson from NC state or even, um, um, even Logan Lee from Iowa. So nothing, like I said, nothing, nothing tremendous, nothing bad. I give him a B. Going on to Seattle. Uh, Seattle had a pretty decent draft. They didn't do too bad. Um, obviously, I think that Brian Murphy one, that's the biggest one that stands out to me in the first round. Uh, man, I don't know. They really didn't fill their needs at all now that I'm looking at that part. So, uh, man, I don't know. I feel like they've got to get a C- minus because I don't think they failed. I don't think they did a bad job. Just not a great draft. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a great draft. The only one that kind of that kind of stuck out to me a little bit, obviously, outside of Jalen Daniels. I mean, um, seeing Luke McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey's brother, getting selected, um, that was obviously really sentimental to the McCaffrey family, not only just having just Christian now, having the brother involved in the NFL. So, wish are, are, you looking, are you looking at uh, Seattle? No, I'm actually. I was actually. <laughs> I was like, Jim Dennis, who is he? And then you're talking about Luke McCaffrey. Yes, yeah, so Seattle. I was, I was Seattle. looking between my notes, and I, and I flipped through wrong, so I do apologize about that. <laughs> I mean, um, looking at the correct one, obviously, AJ Barner for Michigan, that would be definitely something. But like I said, nothing, nothing fantastic, nothing great. So. Going on to the 49ers. Man, the 49ers are really good at finding talent, so I'm not going to knock them. Because I just don't see it. Um, I'm going to trust the fact that they are extremely talented in picking teams. Uh, and so overall, I do like Ricky Pearsall. I think that was a good pickup. I think that's kind of an underrated pickup. Man, I'm, I'm going to give them a B plus just because I trust in the 49ers, even though my gut feels like it should be a C plus. Yeah, I'm I'm only in the C plus range. I, I I'm sticking with my gut, but I mean, obviously T- Tatum for- Bethune in the in the seventh round. That's that's a good yeah. steal. That's I, I like steal. that. I like that a lot. That was, that was one of the guys I was going to bring up. But outside of him, obviously, Rick and Parcell from Florida, seeing what, able he, what he was able to do. So I, I'd give him a C minus, honestly. Going on to Tampa Bay. Overall, I like what Tampa Bay did. Uh, they started off by adding up to that front line to try to protect Baker. Uh, and then I think uh, Jalen McMillan, uh, picking him up, wide receiver from Washington. I want to see where he fits in. I feel like him and Trey Palmer are going to have to fight back and forth for that spot. It's, it's a good one. And then also picking up Bucky Irving, running back from Oregon in the fourth round. I like that too. So I'm going to give them a B. I, I, I like what they did, but it wasn't an outstanding draft. Yeah. I would, give them, I would honestly give them a B, B minus. I'm in the same boat, obviously. It's definitely going to be a battle between him and Bucky Irving, obviously. That's going to be fun. But, I mean, of course – Jalen McMillan from Washington. We obviously will see what he did. So it's definitely going to be a it's definitely going to be an interesting thing. It's going to be another target for Baker Mayfield to shoot for. I didn't realize they picked up Devin Culp in the seventh round. I like that. Uh, that was a really good one. So still sticking with my B. I think they did a pretty pretty solid job in the draft. Um, yeah. Going on to the Tennessee Titans, uh, picking up J.C. Latham. That was just kind of what was left for him. I think they wanted Joe Alt, but taken uh, up ahead of them by the, by the Chargers. Uh, Trevante Sweat in the second round, uh, Kedrick, uh, Cedric Gay, uh, you know Gray. Sorry, man, getting a tongue twister there. Um, man, looking through their their overall draft, they filled their needs, got the guys they needed. I like what the Tennessee Titans did. They're protecting their guy, the, the, who I think is going to be their future quarterback, and kind of building around that uh, as well. So overall, I like what they did. wasn't super great draft. I'm going to stick it right right around a B. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I mean, obviously, Cedric Gray from North Carolina, that was definitely a good aspect pick for them. And then, obviously, Jarvis uh, Brownlee Jr. from Louisville. I mean, it's definitely going to be uh, a good season for – it's definitely going to be different, obviously, not seeing Derrick Henry for the Tennessee Titans. But, I mean, you can only do so much between that. So, this this is definitely going to be a season to where maybe we can have the upper advantage for, on Tennessee with the Bengals. Yeah. Uh, now going to Washington, getting to the yeah. last team, the one that you wanted to talk about. Jaden Daniels, I'm not high on him. Uh, didn't think that was a great, um, but getting Jazan Newton, uh, that's, man, that's a good defensive addition. Looking at everything that they have, uh, and you brought up Luke McCaffrey, too, former Nebraska player, quarterback that couldn't couldn't succeed there, went on to 
where was it? And then he went over to Rice. Uh, he went to SMU, I think, and then Rice, something like that. Uh, bounced yeah. around. Good for him, man, because he had an, a tremendous season at Rice, realizing that wide receiver is your role. Uh, play it, and I think I think you can be special as long as you stick to it and, and keep on grinding it, grinding because of the genes that you've got. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I, I'm not big on what Washington did. I think they go from a four-win team to a five or six-win team. So I'm yeah. going to give them a C minus. I mean, Washington just obviously, it just seemed like they just didn't click with Ron Rivera behind out around the headset. But I mean, excuse me. I mean, obviously having Ben Sinnott for Kansas State for a tight end position, it's definitely going to be something to where they they needed weapons like this to throw to, obviously. And even the same way with obviously with McCaffrey, like I was just mentioning a little bit ago. But I mean, you get into these type of situations to where it's just you need to get those momentum going and it just seems like it's a struggle for Washington. So maybe this is a step in the right direction. Maybe it's not, but we got to wait and see until the season gets here. Yep. But anyways, guys, that is all we've got for today. Recapping all of the, all 32 NFL, uh, NFL teams and Woo! what they did in the draft, give them a grade, man. That was, I, I was totally picturing us flying through all of those. Uh, and so we're not going to have time for a two minute drill, but we are, we are going to release this two minute drill. Stay tuned and we'll, we'll get that out to you guys. But if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment down below. You can follow us on social media. Uh, you can find us all over on social media, X formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. So go show us some love. And then of course, if you're listening on Apple podcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcast, give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us over there. We thank everybody so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.